Welcome to Meeple Mentor. I'm Jared, and we are about to play Ishtar, Gardens of Babylon. Let's take a look. I'll show you how. Feel free to pause the video as needed to follow along with your copy of the game. My goal is this video can not only teach you to play, but can be shown at the game table to help set up and teach the game at your next game session. As part of that goal, I've added chapter timestamps in the description to the different sections of the tutorial to easily recap relevant rules for you. Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell below the video so you don't miss any of my latest content. Legend has it that a long time ago, on a starless night, the Queen's Gardener collapsed from exhaustion in the middle of the desert. He cried for hours. How could he grow anything in such an arid wasteland? One of his tears, however, passed through the sand to reach the other world. Goddess Ishtar, moved by the man's despair, collected his tear and sent it back to the surface, transforming it into a surging and inexhaustible water source. Eternally grateful, the gardener swore to do his best to create the most magnificent gardens of these lands. The King of Babylon has tasked you with the most difficult mission of creating spectacular gardens in the middle of the desert to please his queen. Only a few fountains are available to be used to expand vegetation, bloom the flower beds, plant majestic trees, and collect gems to take the upper hand over opponents in Ishtar Gardens of Babylon. Let's look now at how to set up the game. First, you'll create the desert terrain map by randomly selecting as many terrain boards as players plus two and place them on the table so they are all connected. You can create different layouts each game. Return any unused terrain boards to the game box. Place the carpet board next to the play area and randomly add the six cup tiles on the six spots designated for them. Set aside the six starting vegetation tiles that have these bubbles shown on them. Then on each space, form random piles of six vegetation tiles on each cup that match the shape. Put the piles face down. Once all six cups have six tiles on them, add on top of each one one of the starting tiles that matches the shapes. The start tiles should be face up. In a three-player game, remove the bottom tile of each stack. In a two-player game, remove the bottom two tiles from each pile. The blooming tokens are the single and double tiles. Place these in the center of the carpet board. Shuffle the 26 tree cards to form a draw pile face down and draw five cards face up into a display row. Place a tree token on each card and create a supply pile of the rest of the trees nearby. On the terrain map, place a random fountain on each indicated space. There's a spot for one fountain on each board. Next, collect the colored gems and place one on each rock space with a gem color shown. Match the gem colors to the rock colors. Leave the rest of the gems near the board within reach. For each player, deal a random player board. Make sure one of them has the first player symbol in the lower left. They start the game as the first player. Each player gets four assistant meeples matching the color of their board. Two are kept on your player board, while the other two go to the middle of the carpet board. Give each player one purple gem to start with. The first player also gets the watering can token. You're now set up and ready to play. The game plays turn after turn until the end game condition is met, upon which final scoring takes place. As soon as two piles of vegetation are empty from the carpet board, the end of the game is triggered. Complete the round so each player plays the same number of total turns. Whoever has the most victory points will win. During the game, you'll be slowly adding new vegetation tiles to the gardens on the map and gaining gems. When you place a vegetation tile over a space with gems, you get to collect them. The gems are resources at your disposal, with purple the most common, followed by red and white. The rarer the color gem, the more valuable it will be to purchase high-scoring trees. You can purchase one or more trees from the display at the end of each of your turns by spending the required gems. The points at the top right corner will be scored for you at the end of the game. Gems can be used to buy and place trees and unlock new skills in assistance. Each player board shows two rows of 10 upgrades. The first row upgrades are immediate bonuses, while the top row are end game points to award. The vegetation tiles have yellow flowers in their flower beds, which each score a point if your assistant controls that flower bed. 
so there's a lot of area control going on throughout the game. A typical score range is between 50 and 60 points. Let's look at some of the vegetation tiles next and how placement works. There's three shapes of vegetation possible, each with three spaces in them. They can have grass spaces and light green, or dark green flower spaces with one to four flowers in it. Remember, the six starting tiles have bubbles of water shown on them. They have no other gameplay effect. The terminology used here is important. A flower bed is a group of contiguous flower spaces. It can span multiple vegetation tiles. Assistance must be placed on a vegetation tile to take control of flower beds. By controlling a flower bed, they will get points for each visible flower in that bed. A flower bed can have, at most, one assistant on it. A garden is the term for a group of contiguous vegetation tiles, which includes both flower beds and green grass spaces. At least one space of a garden must be connected to a fountain. They all grow out from fountains. A garden can only connect to a single fountain, but a fountain can connect to multiple gardens. So, that means you can't place a vegetation tile that would make a garden from one fountain touch another group coming from a separate fountain. They must be kept separate. Additionally, a garden can have multiple flower beds since there can be grass separating flower spaces, making up separate flower bed groups. Likewise, one player's assistant can be on one flower bed of a garden, while another player's assistant can control a different one in the same garden. The fountains on the board are color-coded and can award points based on their value at the end of the game. The white scores the most, followed by red, then purple. The player that controls the most flower spaces in the flower beds of gardens connected to a fountain controls the fountain. Here's an example. This is one garden touching the purple fountain. These are two gardens stemming from a white fountain. The blue player controls this flower bed of only one flower space. Both yellow and pink are in this other garden, but control their own flower beds. Yellow controls three flower spaces, while pink controls four. Since pink controls the most flower spaces in a garden attached to the white fountain, they control the fountain and will score the fountain's points at the end of the game, assuming nothing else changes. The flowers themselves will still score one point each for each player's flower beds they control. On a player's turn, follow these steps in order. Choose a vegetation tile, place a vegetation tile, collect gems, perform special actions, and lastly, plant trees. On the first turn of the game, the first player chooses any of the starting tiles from the stacks and takes it, then places the watering can on top of its stack. On every other turn after, move the watering can clockwise one space, ignoring empty piles. Take the tile off the top of the pile it moves to. If you don't want to take the vegetation tile it moves onto, you can pay a gem to move it again. Spend any color gem for each advancement you wish to pay for. Take the tile and reveal the next one on the pile. Next, you'll place the chosen tile on the terrain board according to the game's placement rules. The tile must connect to a fountain or existing garden, and you cannot cover over a sacred tablet space or any other vegetation tile. You may not place a tile in a way that would cause more than one assistant to end up controlling the same flower bed. It doesn't matter if it's the same player's assistant, one flower bed can only have one assistant. You may never place a tile that would connect two different gardens of different fountains together. For example, you can't place this tile here because it would make two gardens touch from different fountains. Whether the space connecting it is grass or flowers, the tile itself can't touch the tile of another garden from a different fountain. Next, collect gems from the map if you covered over any. Put them in your personal supply on the table in front of you. When you place a tile without covering rock spaces, you don't get any gems. After collecting gems, you may now resolve a special action if the tile you just placed shows one of the special action icons. You can choose not to take the special action, but you can't use it later. This is the assistant icon. If you have at least one assistant in front of you, you may immediately place an assistant on that tile to cover that icon. However, you can't place it if there's already an assistant owning the flower bed it connects to. This is the skill icon. You may unlock a skill on your board. Any locked skills on the bottom row can be unlocked by placing any two gems in your supply over the skill. To unlock the top row, the skill immediately below it must already be unlocked. If so, you can spend two gems on it to unlock it. You can see on the artwork a road connecting each pair. Gems placed on your board cannot be moved or used for anything else. The colors of the gems used to unlock skills doesn't matter. 
you may only unlock one skill per turn, max. I'll explain what all the skills are in the next section. The third special icon you may find is a question mark, which is wild. When you place a tile with this icon, you either place an assistant or unlock a skill, as I just described. The last thing you can do on your turn is plant trees. You can plant as many trees as you want and can afford to. To plant a tree, pick a tree card from the display or one you've reserved and check its gem cost. Spend those gems to the general supply. You can't take the card or plant the tree without paying the exact cost. Put the card face down in front of you. Put the tree token that was on the card onto any free grass space on the map. Try to place it adjacent to a flower bed you control. You can pay and plant additional trees this way until you decide to stop. Finally, reveal new tree cards off the top of the deck to replenish the display back up to five. Put a tree token on each. This ends your turn, so the next player clockwise begins their turn. Let's quickly look at the various skills that can be unlocked during the game. The bottom row skills are activated one time as soon as they're unlocked. The top row skills score points at the end of the game for you per their criteria. Remember that two gems must be paid onto the skill to unlock it, and the bottom skill must be unlocked before the top one in any given column. From left to right, the first one here lets you take any two gems you want from the supply. They can be any color. The second one lets you take a single space blooming token showing three flowers on it from this carpet board and add it onto any free grass space. The next one lets you take a double space blooming tile token from the carpet board and put it on any two adjacent free grass spaces. Neither blooming token types can be placed directly on the desert. The next skill shows two benefits. You gain an assistant of your color from the carpet board and place it in front of you. The second benefit is to reserve a tree card from the display. Put it face up in front of you with the tree token on it. You're not penalized for not completing the card by the end of the game. Reserving it next to you lets you choose to plant it on a future turn, while no one else can. After taking the card from the display, refill the empty space with the next card from the deck. The last skill on the bottom row also has two benefits. Gain one of your assistants from the carpet board, and take a vegetation tile of your choice from the carpet board as well, reserving it to be used on a future turn. With a reserved vegetation tile in front of you, you can choose not to move the watering can on your turn, and place this instead. There are no points earned or lost from a reserve tile at the end of the game. Looking at the scoring upgrades at the top row, the first one on the left will give you two points for each sacred tablet space adjacent to at least one flower bed you control. The tablets can't ever be covered by tiles, but you can get some points by having flower beds next to them using this skill. The second top row skill has two benefits. At the end of the game, you'll score seven points. Secondarily, you can now consider any skill icon to be an assistant icon and vice versa. This gives you more flexibility in choosing your tiles to place, since effectively all the icons are wild for you. Having the third skill unlocked will give you points for your collected gems and your supply at the end of the game. White gems are one point, red gems are two points, and purple gems are three points. The next skill will give you two points for each tree on the map standing adjacent to at least one flower bed you control. This skill is the reason the placement of trees matters. The last skill upgrade will give you seven points for each unused assistant you have in front of you at the end of the game. The end of the game is triggered once two of the vegetation tile stacks are emptied. Finish the round you're playing so each player played the same number of turns. Check who has the first player board to remember who started the game. Grab the score pad and write everyone's names and scores down as you go. The back of the rulebook helps describe the different scoring methods. First, everyone checks their planted tree cards. Any that are face up and reserved should be discarded. Then reveal all the played tree cards and count up the points for each player. Next, look at each flower bed players control. For each flower bed, score one point for each flower visible. Look at each fountain on the map and see which player controls it. The controlling player of a purple fountain scores four points. Controlling a red fountain scores 6 points. Controlling a white fountain scores 8 points. Remember that to control a fountain, you must control a flower bed and a garden connected to the fountain with the most number of flower bed spaces, regardless of the number of flowers. Lastly, go through each player's unlocked skills on their top row of their board. Score these points as I previously explained. The player with the most victory points wins the game.
Keep the rulebook handy and check BoardGameGeek.com for FAQs and extra content. If you want to support the channel, now you can. We've started a Patreon page at Patreon.com slash MeepleMentor. There's various pledge levels for small monthly support that helps grow the channel's content. You can get access to new content early, you'll get to vote on new game tutorials that come out on the channel, and more. But of course, simply watching our videos, liking, commenting, and all of that YouTube stuff certainly helps. Thank you so much. Consider giving us a subscribe if you found this teaching helpful. Stick around to watch another Learn to Play video, or check out the latest news video to learn about what's going on in the board gaming industry. There's always new games coming out. Until next time, teach when you can, but always be learning. See you later.